SMT Nation, we back Nation. We've got a big update out of Verizon. It's pretty big for the network. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I guess we we knew this was coming. You know, it was just a matter of time. And, you know, the network speeds, the capacity that's about to be on the Verizon network is literally about to explode. All right, things like this are uh, really unprecedented. No, no company up to this point has had this much this much spectrum with this type of density within certain markets it's going to be incredible to see this is basically the network vision uh, that we've been discussing for the last couple of years once the c-band auction completed and we knew what verizon was going to do with small cells and millimeter wave let's discuss those things here as uh, as this unfolds uh, we're going to start to see it come together quite nicely all right so first of all a uh, big shout out to Rahul, who, you know, uh, tagged me on this photo, shared it with me originally from the, I guess, the cell map or Reddit community. Um, I'll go ahead and, I guess, link this for you guys in the description. So it'll be there. Also in the description, the real SMT, buy me a coffee link. Want to support your creators directly? You can buy us a coffee. There's other ways to support us as well. They're all down there in the description. And if you're looking for a really good deal on your wireless service, look no further than our partner, Mint Mobile. You guys know the Fox. They can save you money. Looking at the mintmobile.com forward slash Sneed partner link, I'm looking at the savings and they look pretty daggone good. All right, so use our link. It's in the description. Unlock those savings. Get their legendary customer care and you'll be supporting the channel. And switching is super easy. So if you want to add a line, you know, get a secondary line or you just want to switch as your primary carrier, it is a great way to go. All right, so let's take a look here. So it, just overall, you know, when you look at the, the performance here, we got 2,093 megabits per second downlink, and we have 145 megabits per second uplink. Tremendous throughput here, right? Ping at 17, jitter at 4, loaded latencies at 249 and 40, respectively, for the downlink and uplink. That is a very good test. Now, to a, to a mobile device, this is not all that important. Obviously... You know, speed tests are proxies of available capacity at a certain tower, in a certain sector, in a certain place, and all those things. But what this is showing us is this is what Verizon can do with a 160 megahertz N77 channel, plus their additional LT connections. Right? This is an NSA 5G connection. Verizon has not launched an official SA 5G connection. Uh, you know launch yet that, that's happening later this year probably and you know that's coming and we'll, we'll talk about that more later but this is what they can do today folks 160 megahertz is meaningful because that's verizon's national average and this does not take into account the other spectrum assets that have still not moved over like cbrs which in some places verizon has 30 or 40 megahertz licensed then they have an additional opportunity to use unlicensed spectrum in that frequency as well there are a lot of things that they can do to create more capacity right they're still going to be building out small cells they're still adding millimeter wave that's probably going to accelerate in the next year or two and they're still doing this and and they're going to put c-band on small cells folks the the verizon network potential just looking at this speed test right here they can basically do this at every single cell site. I want you to wrap your mind around this. This is a company that has said that they want to have 50% of their cell site tower grid on their own native fiber. And we're talking about, you know, 10 gig fiber and those types of things. You know, those, those types of owner economics mixed with the capacity and the throughput potential puts them in the catbird seat to create an incredibly fast more so capacitive network so why is this important obviously the mobile network experience is going to be great when it's really fast your stuff gets done sooner your time to con uh, content more instantaneous but i think what's more important is you know verizon is really trying to do this home internet thing and they're sticking it to big cable and they're showing growth and all those great things if you could put 2000 megabits per second on a tower site on on a three sector tower site right 2000 megabits on each of those three sectors 
Just think about what that can do for home internet options for people. And like I said, this is 160 megahertz. Folks, there are places where they have 180 megahertz of C-band, 200 megahertz of C-band. This does not take into account the carrier aggregation that they can potentially do with CBRS to the likes of 30, 40, 60, 70 megahertz additional on downlink throughput. There's more run room. Verizon can do more. Now, something that I've talked about in videos past, I'm not sure, you know, why, you know, people have this negative sentiment towards Verizon. It's, it's almost like cutting off your nose to spite your face. If Verizon can come to your market and produce this type of capacity and sell you home internet for 30 or 35 or $50, and your other option is DSL or explosive pricing cable or whatever the case may be, this is what we've been asking for. This is unprecedented. We have never seen to scale this type of an option, right? This type of a network. And I also want to throw in the fact that, you know, T-Mobile did the same thing, right? They, they upgraded their network. They built up all these sites and added N41 with all the spectrum. But the one thing that, you know, or there's two things that we got to say about T-Mobile and how they've done home internet so far is number one, bottom tier priority. Right, your 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 T-Mobile home internet connection is deprioritized over all mobile network users. That means free lines. That means prepaid. That means MVNO. That means the hotspot on all those connections. I mean, it is all the way at the bottom. Verizon's home internet has basically its own QCI because of you know 5G UW basically being a QCI seven connection, right? So the this basically tells you that you're always going to have a standard or a quality of service, right? And I'll also throw in that I think Verizon has had a more stable consumer premise equipment. The gateways that they send out seem to be a little bit more reliable than what T-Mobile's kind of using now. And that can change in the future, and we're looking forward to the time where consumer premise equipment is very good and not the weakest link, right? So... In my opinion, th thus far, when I look at, you know, potential churn rates and I look at who's keeping the services longer and those types of things, there's a lot of good here. Folks, this is unprecedented times. We've never seen this capacity. Fiber circuits continue to move towards 10 gig across the country. That's going to change everything. This, folks, is 50% of what Verizon can do. Think about it. They're only at 220 million pops of coverage for 5G UW. That's going to move towards 300 million pops. They're going to have 200 megahertz of C-band. They're going to have CBRS moved over to NR, right? They're going to continue to move and migrate spectrum over to 5G and move to a standalone operations. There's a lot of run room. The, the 10 gig circuits, the densification process showing the propensity to build more small cells, build out more millimeter wave, which by the way, guys, Millimeter wave today does four gigs downlink, which is double this throughput, right? Uplinks three, four, five hundred megabits. And they're going to densify that and add more of that. And then, of course, we got repeater technologies, right? Pivots and echoes, probably external hardware for consumer premise equipment to improve the connection and the quality. This is why I'm really excited about Verizon. It's no preference for any one company. I am any company can do these things. But Verizon seems to be the one that's taking those things seriously and being on the cutting edge of the technology and leading the way. That's why I get excited about what they're doing. It's not so much me getting excited about the company. It's me getting excited about what they can bring to the table, to the customer and the marketplace. You know, and, and, and still, to this day, think about the pricing, folks. Look, look at this performance. You can get this performance on Visible Plus for $45 dollars a month you can have this and when you think about like home internet 35 dollars with their wireless plan 25 dollars with their wireless i don't i don't understand where this whole concept of the verizon network is expensive <laughs> i don't really get it see what i'm saying there's ways to get this type of access without breaking an arm selling your leg whatever you know 
Uh, but these are very exciting times. By the way, T-Mobile's doing this too. at and doing this too. It's a great time in wireless networking. I'll have separate videos for those guys at a later time. But tell me what you guys think of the spectral efficiency, the performance. How excited are you for this? By the way, this test uh, from Fountain Springs, Colorado or something. I forget. Uh, but anyways, hashtag 5G, hashtag Verizon, hashtag 5GUW for all the real ones that watch this all the way through. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions. You all the voice of the people. The SMT Nation, let your voice be heard.